Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The time is finally here and it is the long awaited height right night. That's right, the height right. The original 1984 dropper post system should be going on tonight. So, what have I been doing since the last video? Well, I went to B&Q and I bought one of these. No, I hadn't ever seen one before either. It's apparently a radiator and or vent cleaning brush, but it was absolutely perfect for cleaning inside the seat tube. So that went down well. I used some of this elbow grease, sort of degreaser, citrus degreaser, um, which is a couple of quid from Aldi, the surprise aisle. Here in the UK, we know it well. The middle aisle in Aldi, where a random assortment of cheap and cheerful goodies appear on a weekly basis. So yeah, elbow grease plus radiator vent brush is what initially got the inside of the seat tube clean. Then I did have to go ahead at B&Q and invest in a set of files. So yeah, the fit of the seat post was initially very, very tight. And I'll just play a little clip of the situation before all of this cleaning and filing now. So this is the current situation. When I undo the C-clamp, it turns fairly freely, but there's a lot of resistance there. You can hear that grinding. So that isn't, I mean, when I pull at it, that isn't gonna slide in and out easily. It, it takes quite a bit of effort to move it up and down. So after the cleaning, I used two files. I used one that had a curved profile to it, uh, flat on one side, curved on the other, and initially worked away with that. And then to just, I could still feel inside the seat tube as far as I could reach with my fingers that there was still a few uneven sections. So I then took the thinner, more fine, uh, round file and worked on those last few uneven sections. So that's basically how it went down. What actually ended up happening is that the degreaser and, and the muck that it generated from cleaning it all of this out, got into all the other tubes, contaminated them, got them wet. So to avoid rust, I cleaned it all out with GT85, which is a water displacer. And that seemed to do the trick. So a lot of gunk and black stuff came out of it. But I know now that all of the water is out, all the tubes are sprayed inside all of them. And yeah, initially there was some rattling with all the metal filings moving about, but that's now gone. And I'm happy that it's clean. So let me show you the situation now, having cleaned and filed and got this into a state that I think the height right is gonna work. So this is the situation now in terms of how freely and smoothly the seat post is moving up and down inside the seat tube. This is with no grease. I think that's pretty good. The only sticking point, literally, is about there. So about that height, um, my files wouldn't go in to the seat tube far enough. So it does stick. I don't know if I'll need it to go any, any lower than that on the dropper. I am quite tall, so I do have the seat up quite high to start with. And it's only a two and a half inch drop on the standard high rise system. So I don't know if I'll need it to go in any deeper, but if I do, my plan is to either cut down the seat post or just file the end so that I'm filing away at the actual seat post that's going down into the thinner section of seat tube rather than trying to get a longer file or anything to file further down the seat tube. Also, this is slipping, as you can see, super, super, super easy now. And, but there isn't really any movement in it. It's not like it's too loose but I'm gonna fill that with grease. So once that's packed full of grease, I think it'll slow down the movement a little bit. The reason I'm packing it so full of grease is that obviously 
probably one of the reasons that this original dropper post system, the height right from 1984 didn't catch on or continue for very long is um, that you're actually using your own seat tube as the wearing component or the sheath uh, for the dropper system. The amount that I'm going to be using it, which is only when I'm going on fairly steep downhill uh, technical sections or maybe the occasional traffic light where I decide to put my foot flat on the ground. Um, I do like to ride in a more kind of road style, uh, efficient, high-ish high saddle position. So it will be useful to just drop it down as and when I feel I want to. Uh, but I don't think I'll be using it so often that I'm going to end up wearing the inside of the seat, seat tube as long as I've got enough grease in there. So that is the plan to pack it full of loads of grease. Um, which should, like I said, slow down this movement a little bit. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be epic. So let's roll high ride night. So I have taken the bike off the stand and put the wheels back on. Pumped the tyres up to 60 psi so that I know it's basically as high as it's going to be or roughly where it's going to be in terms of the height. I've then jumped on the bike and tried to get the saddle adjusted to the right point. So the uppermost point that I'd be using uh, when I want to ride on the road. Uh, I've then used a little screwdriver to put a tiny little mark at the back of the seat post here. So I know that that's the top position that I want for the high ride. The saddle is at the position that I want it to be at. So if I get on the bike now, you'll see that there's still a tiny bit of a bend in my knee. So I'll just do that quickly. So that's at the bottom of the pedal stroke and you see there's a tiny bit of bend still on my knee. So that's where I want to be, even the other leg, sometimes you have slight discrepancies between your leg, but that's that knee is still a little bit bent. So that's where I want to be really. I don't think I want to be any higher than that, uh, but that should be the most efficient position. So the next thing is to see what's in the height right package. So this is what you get in the height right pack. You get a sticker, the instructions, and in the main bag here, you get the the clamp which has the high right logo on it, Breeze and Angel maker's mark and the patent and the, the logo there. So it's got the main spring. I ordered black to match everything else in time with my current clean looking build. Uh, it came with this, which is a flat piece of metal when it arrives. It's just super flat. I've tried to shape it into this circle to go inside here. I need to shape it a little bit more but this is for use with 25.4 to 26.0 seat posts. And my seat post is 26.0, so I will be using this. Then in a separate little bag, you get a adapter tube for eight millimeter binder holes because the height right is, is actually built for six millimeter uh, post binder holes. So you've got this uh, knurled nut, you've got a washer and another lock nut. And there are already some locks and screws and things attached to this clamp when it comes. I've then taken off my quick release clamp and the end of that because I won't be needing that anymore because I'll be using the ones that have arrived with this kit and a couple of spanners because everything seems to be just a spanner adjustment system so that's what we're going to try and do. So I'm just going to try and bend this into shape a bit better and then we'll attempt to fit this thing. So that's what we've got. Pretty simple as things go. It's basically going to involve taking the seat post out, putting that round it, uh, clamping that to the seat post, and then putting that through the quick release seat post clamp. And simple as that, it should spring up and down. 
I'm now just going to grease the seat post because this is actually going to be moving up and down inside the seat tube which isn't really the intended use. So I've just put this shim for 25.4 to 26mm um, seat posts around it. I'm going to pull the actual greased up seat post out. Wow, there's a lot of grease in there. We'll leave that there. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to try and swing this clamp all the way up and over. And then I can put it back in. I might run a bit of grease up it again. Seeing as though it's there to be used. I have some wipes to hand, which is good. So that's where my little mark that I've made with the little screwdriver is for the highest point that I want. I need to try and get the shim inside the clamp. You absolute nightmare. So I finally managed to get the clamp on here. It was actually very awkward because the shim that fits inside it is for 25.4 to 26.0 seat tubes and because mine is a 26.0 seat tube it's the biggest seat tube that you use the shim with which means that the, the space inside the clamp is very minimal so that was really quite tricky I ended up having to use uh, a screwdriver to push um, the shim down as I slid the clamp up the seat post and that eventually did work and I had to use some grease to get it there so I'm hoping the grease isn't going to affect the actual fit a bit in the end because we don't want it moving up and down afterwards. The next thing is that this knurl nut here is meant to be sticking out 16 millimeters when you fit the height right onto it. I don't think that's going to really work so I'm just going to have to try and make it work. It seems like there's just about enough space for this lock nut to go on. So hopefully there's enough of the threads left there for it to work. So we'll just tie on this up because the position of this isn't going to change. This position still needs to change because my mark for the highest is there. So this is too, too high for me at present. So I've just adjusted the braid on seat clamp quick release um, so that it's basically as tight as it can be with me still able to operate it on the fly. So I don't think I can go any tighter than that on this knurled nut on the other side. So that's as far as I can go. So I'm just going to tighten this M6 nut that I've got here up. Yeah, that, that's coming through pretty well actually. So if we say that's on. Right, now if we just make sure that our mark is in the right place. On clamp. No, yeah, the mark's there. The mark's there. Saddle's facing forward, straight. Yeah, saddle's facing forward and straight. So clamp that shut and clamp this together. So I'm just tightening the seat post clamp here to make sure it stays in this position. So I think this is the moment of truth. I've tried to tighten everything up the best I can. So let's give this 
height right system a try. Right, so after fitting it and fiddling with it and messing about, it slips because there's a tiny little bit of play in this section. So where the seat post clamp goes through, you can see there that the actual end of it will move. So I think that's what this tube is for, which they call the adapter tube for eight millimeter clamp holes. So I think I'm gonna try and put one of those in each side, which should sturdy it up a little bit. So I'm gonna cut a section of that with the hacksaw on both sides. And hopefully that'll make it a bit stiffer. So I've just cut two sections of the aluminium tube shim uh, to fit inside the seat post clamp and I'm going to just file off the edges now and see how that works. So we've got these two little sections of the aluminium adapter tube. Um, the longer one is to go in this side, so let's try and pull that in. Oh, perfect. Can you see that? That looks amazingly good as a fit on the other side. Yep, it's fitting nicely. So I'm hoping that by fitting this extra layer of the adapter shim, that will actually stop the wiggle and prevent the saddle from slipping left to right, which was what was happening before. It seemed before that I had to set it slightly too far right for it to go straight but it wasn't staying there. Um, so I'm hoping that now it'll stay where it's meant to be. So, put this back through. Oh, it's not the other tube out. Where's that tube gone? <laughs> the little bit of tube flew off on, over to the other side of the room. Anyway, that's gone in now. And then we had the knurled nut. So we'll whack that on. Right, knurled nut going on. I tried to make this as tight as I could, still allowing for me to open and close it. About there. Well, that's where we want it. So then we just try and fit this high right spring on. And we put the washer on. And then we put this M6 nut on. Yeah, about the same position as last time. Let's just check this. Yeah, on. Oh yeah, that's that's good. I can open that on the fly. Okay, let's just check the angle of the seat now. So it's slightly off to the left. So if we try and correct that and see if the wiggle's been removed. So after all that, there was still like 40 minutes of me just constantly adjusting it with a spanner and realigning the seat and just fiddling generally to try and get it to work. As you can see now, the um, saddle is pretty much in line with the top tube. So this is the situation that I'm at right now. Um, I just wanna show you that it, that it is firing in a pretty straight plane so it's not moving off too much. Whereas previously, throughout the process of fitting this, I'd push it down and it'd be way out here pointing right. And then it'd pop back up and it'd be in line again. And that was basically because when I was tightening this clamp, it was moving out. And also prior to that, the uh, adapter, aluminium adapter shim that went in inside the binder holes um, wasn't there, so it would move as well. But now it's like this. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a slight amount, maybe like 
five mil, it's pointing to the right now when it's in the down position. But I'd say the down position is less important because I'm going to be basically flying down hills or just stop to traffic lights or mainly flying down technical descents. So it's not particularly important to me that it's bang in line when it's on the down position. The up position when I'm pedaling and I'm you know on the road and I'm pedaling long distances, I'm going to want that to be lined up really straight. So this is as good as I've managed to get it. It's two, maybe three to five mil off to the right um, when it's in the down position, but in the up position, it's perfect and it pops up really nicely. So there you have it. Finally, we did get a working high right. And yeah, I've got a fun little addition to this in that I've got some gold M6 nuts that are lock nuts. They've actually got the rubber locking seal inside them. I picked these up from uh, a place in Leeds called Race TI. So titanium, I guess. But yeah, they, ha they sell all these little bolts but what's good about these are they're a bit shallower um, than the original ones that came with the height right which means that this one currently I've had to put a normal M6 nut on that isn't a lock nut so that's because the the non lock nut versions are shallower but with this I should be able to save that space this isn't actually meant to be clamped fully tight at this position it's meant to be able to move freely which also might be affecting it slightly and the other ones just having the gold uh, and a bit more space to play with should help things. So yeah, we've got four of those pretty cheaply from a local seller. So that should be good. So I hope you enjoyed this height right installation video and this episode of Try Real Hard. Please do subscribe and like if this is the kind of content that you're into. I am really trying to make sure that everybody can follow my build because being part of this spin that trash and bash competition to me is a really exciting opportunity and I just want everybody to be able to feel like they're a part of it. So I'm going to be hoping to put out videos every couple of days and I hope that you'll follow along with me. Good night and I'll see you on the next one.